What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Discord.js tutorial today. Since it's 2021, I want to kind of redo the command handler and also do an event handler. This has been a very much requested video. So let's go ahead and get started. However, before we truly get started, I got a present, a gift that I want to talk to you guys about. All right, guys. So BenQ was actually very nice to send me one of their screen bar plus lamps. If you're like me and you like coding at nighttime, this lamp is going to help you a ton. It's actually a lamp that you don't have to necessarily put in your desk. It's actually on top of your monitor. This lamp will completely illuminate your entire desk without having a reflection on your monitor. If you actually see the pictures that I took, there's no reflection on the monitor at all. However, the lamp will lit your whole entire workspace once again without having the need of having an additional lamp somewhere i'm telling you guys as a coder myself and all of the soon-to-be coders are watching this youtube video make sure to invest on a good light source and the screen bar plus is the best option out there if you guys want to go ahead and purchase one of these amazing lamps there's going to be a link in the description go ahead purchase the lamp let's go ahead and head straight into the video so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the event handler and the command handler v2. This is right here, our current command handler, this right here, where we use a Discord collection and then we kind of loop through every file and find the file that ends with JS and then basically handle all the command files through this. But you want to have a separate folder for the command handler. We also want to have a separate folder for the event handler and handle all of the different events like this on separate files. So it's a little bit easier to read and to handle your project. So to do this, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of this, but I'm just going to comment them out. Usually you want to delete it, but just in case I need some reference to this, I'm just going to comment them out. And actually I'm going to comment this out as well. You still need the client that commands equals new discord collection and actually we're going to create a new collection called client that events uh it's equal to a new discord dot collection and this is how we are creating our discord collections so how we're going to structure this is in here in our project we're going to add a new folder and we're going to call this handlers inside the handlers we're going to have two files our first file is going to be the command handler .js. And the second file is going to be the um, event handler. So event underscore handler .js. So these files are what's going to handle all of our events and all of our commands. Next thing here, what we're going to do is go ahead and create like a list. And inside this list, we are going to put the name of these files right here. So command underscore handler, then a comma, and then add the events underscore handler. And for each of these files, we want to loop through them and basically require them into this file. So handler, um, so for each handler, and then here we're going to do an arrow function. And we're just going to do require, open this up with a backtick, and then dot handlers, and then money sign, brackets, handler. This is this exact variable that we created here. And finally, we're just going to pass in clients as well as discord now the reason we're passing into discord is because some of the commands might not might need discord for example like embeds so we're passing in discord just in case of that all right so that's actually it for our main.js and if you actually go ahead and delete all this you're gonna see that our main.js is very clean it's only like 16 pages but there's some spaces here so it could be like 14 lines not pages 14 lines for our main file which looks very nice Let's go ahead and head to our command handler. And the first thing we're gonna do is require FS. If you don't have FS, go ahead and open up your terminal and do npm install FS, just like that. And that'll install FS. You should have this installed if you've been following the tutorials. And we're just gonna simply require, require FS, just like that. And we're gonna do the typical module.exports and we're gonna work in our module.exports for this entire file. So we're gonna get that client. We're also gonna get that Discord that we passed in through um, this right here. And we're gonna do that with an arrow function. And here we are going to create a variable that is gonna loop through every file of our commands folder that we have here. If you don't have a commands folder, you could add that as well. Uh, you should add that, but we already had this from previous tutorials. So 
There it is. Just keep all the commands in the commands folder. And we're going to do const. We're going to name this command underscore files equals fs that read their sync. And in here, we're going to just go ahead and go into our commands folder. And we're going to filter every file that we see in that commands folder to find the ones that are a JavaScript file. So file that ends with and then .js. So if you accidentally put like an image inside of this commands folder, then it's not going to go ahead and grab that file. Then we're going to add that for loop and we're going to do const file. Actually, if you go ahead and go back into your main file, you see that we basically had this before, but we're adding this into a new file, which is much safer and definitely um, better than having everything in the main.js. So for each file of of command underscore files const command is equals require and in here we're going to do a back tick two dots and go into the commands folder do money sign brackets file and let's just do an if statement so if command the name if the command has a name which is if we actually go into a command this name right here if command on lame, then we're gonna do client dot commands dot set command that name command just like that, and else we're just gonna continue. So this is already our command handler. Uh, it's basically this. We just added some other new features to it um, because instead of doing this whole entire if else thing down here in the client that on message that we used to have, we're kind of doing that here inside of a command handler. However, if you actually see this itself, how you do messages with discord.js, it's an event. It's the event message. So let's work on the event handler and it's pretty much the same. We're actually going to go ahead and copy require FS. You have to require FS. Two modules that exports we're gonna pretty much copy everything that we did in the command handler with a little bit of a uh, different things that we have to add so passing discord passing clients do an arrow function and here const events underscore files actually no first we actually want to create since we have a different folders so let's actually go ahead and create the folder first i'm kind of speeding a little bit so we're going to create the folder events. This is going to hold over events. Make sure that you are in your main folder, not inside a subfolder. And inside the events, there's actually two types of events. We have the client events, which is like the cl um, client already. So when your bot is on, that is a client event. And then we have the guild events, like the messages and everything that happens with the guild, aka your Discord server. So we're going to create two more folders. First one's going to be guild. And second one is going to be clients. Um, let me actually do this. Make sure they're all inside of the events folder, not inside each other. So it's clients. And why does this look like this? I do not like this. Let me figure out why it's looking like this. All right. So I figured it out. It was actually putting the client folder inside of the guild folder for some reason. Uh, so make sure you don't do that. There's two folders inside of the events. Don't put them you know, inside each other. So for our event handler, actually, <laughs> I keep messing up. This is a file. I don't want a file. I want a folder. So give me a folder called client. There we go. So again, back to our event handler, we want to create a function that's going to load every directory because right now we are going to load the events. We want to also load client and guild. So to do this, we're going to do const load uh, the directories, so dir, and we're going to create a variable called dir, and we're going to do an arrow function to open this up. In here, uh, const events underscore files equals fs that read dir sync, read dir sync, and we're going to do the pretty much exactly the same thing we had in the command handler, which is open this up with a single quotation marks dot events. And actually make sure this is a backtick. I always forget you have to put a backtick. So backtick events and money sign brackets and passing those directories. Uh, make sure this is dir, not dir. 
then filter and we're going to filter everything to get the js files just in case you mess up and put something like an image you don't want to go ahead and loop through that image you want to loop through everything that is a javascript file and we're going to do the typical for loop so for const file of event files create a variable we open this up create a variable const event equals require we're going to open this up with the back tick uh we're going to do two spaces two dots sorry backslash going to the events and then go into each directory so money sign brackets directories and we're going to go into a specific file that is a javascript file file const event underscore name now we're getting the name of the event equals file that splits and we're going to do a single quotations with a dot and we're going to get the first one of the list so it's going to be uh zero just like that then client dot on we're going to pass in the event's name we are going to bind everything that we need so bind the first one's going to be no the second one is going to be discord and the third one is clients and there seems to be an error up here what is the error Oh, this has to be equals just like that and finally the same thing that we did in, in our main.js file which is we kind of loop through everything like this come in here all the way at the end and we pretty much want to do the exact same thing for these folders so the first folder was called clients and the second folder was called guild and for each we want to e and pass that variable into this function that we created so load directories e so that's pretty much it that's our command handler and that is our event handler now we want to go into the events and let's create some events so the first event we have here in our old file is the ready which is when the bot is online we want to send a message to the console if we actually go ahead and run this clear it's not going to send a message because there is no event that's, you know, telling us to console that log when the bot is online. So to do this, this is actually a client event. So we're going to create a new file and the event itself was called ready. So it's going to be ready.js. And ready.js, all you can do really is just do module.exports. So module.exports. Um, and this is just going to be a simple console.log so console.log and you can type whatever you want so code lion bots is online like that and actually if you go ahead and run it it should work so notice space dot we got an error filter ends with this is where is this the event handler it's actually ends with not end with thank you or debugging this for me or telling me the error there we go code line bot is on line perfect so we have that event already running through our event handler let's do the message event which is pretty much the most important event handler so we're gonna do or sorry the event which is the message event in our events folder inside of our guild folder go ahead and create a new file called message that js and these names of the files are exactly the names of the event so client that on message this event called the message which is how we used to handle our messages is just going to be a file called the message.js so in here we want to do a module exports dot exports equals we're going to pass in discord discord we're going to pass in client as well as message. Now, the reason we're passing is Discord is because sometimes a command might need Discord. So something like an embed is going to need a Discord. Um, so that's why we're passing in Discord. If you are more proficient with JavaScript, you could do this in a different way and not passing Discord through every file. But for this tutorial, that is what we're going to do. So const prefix, this is kind of how we usually do all of our commands here. And actually, let's go ahead and delete the prefix here. Um, we don't no longer need it in our main file. We need it here in the message events. So cons prefix, you can put the prefix that you want. So 
we're going to do pretty much the same thing as we did episode two of the series, which is just if the message content um, that starts with the prefix, if it doesn't start with the prefix, or if the author of the message was the bot itself, uh, but we're just going to simply return. We don't want the bot to send its own commands, and we also want them to start with the prefix. const args equals message dot content dot slice that prefix that length and if you really wanted to you can easily just copy this from your old main file we're pretty much doing this if you really look at the code uh so prefix the length then we're going to split we're going to do slash space plus sign slash const tmd equals args that shift shift um and we're going to shift to lowercase to lower Case. Hopefully I'm typing everything correctly. If I'm not, that's going to be a pain to come back here and fix some errors. Const command equals client dot commands that gets CMD. And finally, if command exists, we want to execute it. So command dot execute client message args and discord if the command itself requires it. So we're pretty much done. However, if you had previous commands and you're kind of just rebuilding it with this event handler I'm showing you, go into each command and you're going to see that we used to have something like this, which is the execute and we're only passing in message and args. Make sure you pass in client before you might not use it, but you have to pass it in. And if you want to pass in discord, you can just add it at the end if you require. So if we do for a clear command, we have to do that. I think I already did it for our play command. We did right here, client message args. Let's do the leave. Did not do it for our leave. So I'm going to have to add a client in here. So that's pretty much it. Everything should work. So let me go ahead and run it and see if we get any errors, which we shouldn't. Go into our Discord server. Let's go ahead and play, which is one of our commands. And it works. Any errors? No errors. So we did it. That's how this command is, or this command handler and this event handler works. If we actually go ahead, I'm going to open this up in this right here. This is how our project is structured. We now have a handlers folder with our command handler and event handler. Can I increase this so it's bigger? I cannot. That sucks. We have an events folder for our guild and client events. In our client events, we have the ready. and our guild events, we have the message. And for example, if you come here in our old main file, we had another event called guild member add. And this is a message when a member joins, then it's going to send a message to a specific channel. You can create this inside of the guild right here and create a file called the guild member add. And that's how it should do it. Uh, make sure the caps are, you know, the same. And that's pretty much it. So. Now we have a pretty good structured project. And if you are deploying a bot or you're going to organize your bot better, definitely do it this way. Don't do it the old way where we had everything in one file. Like again, let me go ahead and show you our main file is literally this big. That's it. Everything else happens through all of these files and all these files are pretty small. Eventually they're probably going to get bigger if you have a, you know, bigger discord bot. but that's it guys. That's all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the Discord.js tutorials, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you guys later on my next video. Peace.